great. So what I'd like to do now is I'd like to talk about exactly how air is pulled into the lungs. You know, we've kind of gone over the major parts of the respiratory anatomy. Here we've got your nasal cavity, your pharynx, your epiglottis. It's a flap of elastic cartilage that closes off the air pathway when we swallow. Um, we've got the larynx up here, contains your vocal cords, connected to the trachea, which goes down here to the primary bronchi. Here's the carina. The carina is what separates the, the division point between the two bronchi. And then here, of course, we have our right and our left lung. All right. So we haven't really talked about how air gets into these guys, and that's what um, I'd like to do now. So it all depends on this mathematical equation, and it's not too bad of an equation. Um, bear with me here. This equation is called Boyle's Law. And what Boyle's Law does is Boyle's Law, like if you take a container that contains um, a fluid or a gas, Boyle's Law relates the volume of that container to the pressure of its contents. So if you have like a, a container of air, it relates the volume of that air to its pressure. Okay. So in other words, Boyle's Law really looks like this. You have P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2. P is pressure, V is volume. I'm going to kind of work it out as an example here. All right. Let's consider you have a syringe. All right. So you're like typical syringe. It's open to the environment. All right. And we start off with this syringe with the stopper pretty close to the end. So the stopper's right there. All right. The container that we're worried about right here is this container right there. So it's the little space between the stopper and the end of the syringe, right? That's how much is in that syringe. So then we can say that this is the syringe at time one. That's the one right here. And then we'll take the same syringe and really draw it. All right, same syringe, but this time I pulled the stopper out. And this is at time two. Okay. So if we consider this container right here, when I pulled that stopper back, what happened to its pressure? Or excuse me, what happened to its volume? All right? And so we pulled the stopper from here to here, the volume got bigger. All right? So the volume at time two got bigger. In order for this side of the equation to still equal that side, right? Pressure at time two is gonna have to go down. All right, if it went up as well, then you'd have like a really big number over here versus a small number. These guys have to be equal according to Boyle's Law. So if volume goes up, pressure has to go down. If I lost you there, just remember if volume goes up, Boyle's Law predicts that pressure will go down. Pressure goes now lower here, so we have low pressure relative to the outside air. Because of that, air is going to rush into that syringe. Fluids and gases are always going to move from high pressure to low pressure. So this is gonna predict that pressure is gonna move into the syringe, all right? Now, if we do the opposite, if we take this syringe and now we push on that stopper, what we've done is we've made the volume smaller now. If volume goes down, pressure is gonna to have to go up. That's exactly what happens. Now we've got high pressure here that's gonna force the air out of the syringe. So this is really important because this is what drives Boyle's Law. And this is exactly what happens in our thoracic cavity. Right below our lungs, there's a thin sheet of muscle tissue that divides our thoracic cavity from our abdominal cavity. And this sheet of muscle is called your diaphragm. All right, so this is your diaphragm. D-I-A-P-H-R-A. Diaphragm, right? Now, when it's relaxed, it looks like this, but when this diaphragm contracts, it gets flatter. Kind of looks like this. So he went from this position when he was relaxed to that position. When this diaphragm contracts, you'll notice that this is causing a change in the volume of your thoracic cavity. As the diaphragm goes from here to here, it contracts, it causes this volume to get bigger. According to Bull's Law, if volume goes up, Pressure goes down, 
All right, so now we have low pressure in this thoracic cavity relative to the outside pressure. Outside atmospheric pressure is like 760 millimeters of mercury. It's not gonna drop it much when that diaphragm contracts. We'll drop it down to like 756 or so. But that's still a difference in pressure that's gonna drive air to go from high pressure here to low pressure here. Air flies through your airways. This is also why we have to have the trachea and the larynx supported with cartilaginous rings or cartilage, you know, to hold those tubes open. Because if we didn't, we had this low pressure, those tubes would just collapse. All right. We also have muscles that connect our ribs. These are the external intercostal muscles. Those guys are going to contract at the same time as the diaphragm does. And that helps to lift our ribs out and up, which also helps to increase the volume of our thoracic cavity during inhale. Now when the diaphragm relaxes, we get a passive recoil of the muscle back to this position. That's gonna decrease the pressure here. Pressure goes, I'm gonna decrease the volume. If volume goes down, pressure goes up. Now we're gonna have high pressure here, low pressure here. The air is gonna move out, okay? When you forcefully exhale, so when you really force air out of your, your lungs, what you're doing is you're contracting your abs, and this is gonna kind of push a lot of your, your guts up into your thoracic cavity or towards your thoracic cavity, which is going to further decrease this volume, driving pressure even higher, forcing the air out with, with more speed. Okay, So that's about half the story. Um, the other half is, I haven't really shown you the full details of what's going on with the lungs. I'm going to draw another syringe, and we'll imagine that this syringe is our thoracic cavity. All right. The stopper here, imagine that's the diaphragm. Actually, let me draw the stopper like this, a little bit higher up. All right, so the stopper here, this is the diaphragm, okay? Now imagine that the lungs are a balloon that's hanging inside that syringe, all right? This is important, okay, because the lungs really are a tissue, they're an organ that's hanging inside your thoracic cavity. They have no physical kind of connection to the inside of your thoracic cavity, but there is low pressure here. All right, so we'll label this as low pressure. And this little space between the lungs and the thoracic cavity, this is called your pleural space. And there's low pressure in this pleural space which kind of holds the sides of those lungs kind of snug against the walls, inner walls of our thoracic cavity. So in this situation, if you were to pull the stopper down, what do you think would happen to that balloon? Well, the balloon would inflate, right? It's the same thing with Boyle's Law. You're increasing the volume here, right? Causing a low drop in pressure. The balloon's gonna inflate to equalize that pressure, right? So as this stopper goes up and down, goes down, the balloon inflates, and then deflates as the stopper goes up. Think of that as your lung, okay? But here's the tricky part. If somebody comes along and breaks your syringe, puts a hole right there, what's gonna happen is the stopper moves. Do you think that balloon's gonna inflate? No, it's not gonna inflate anymore because the air now can just come through this hole. As the stopper moves, the lung stays, or the balloon stays deflated. This is what happens when you have a pneumothorax. This is what happens when your thoracic cavity is punctured. Air is going to come in through that hole as the diaphragm contracts. The lungs are not going to inflate. Good news is, is that each lung has its own thoracic cavity. So if one lung is, on one side is punctured, the other, other lung will still inflate properly. All right. And that's basically what drives inhalation.